Hello everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we're going to fly the Hawk again. It's really a nice flying ultralight. It's a pilot's dream machine. And the great part about this aircraft, they're still in business. You can still get parts for this fabulous aircraft. You can buy them either in a tricycle configuration or a tailwheel configuration. I used a GPS data logger and combined it with a software that's free, GoPro bought them out, called Dashware.net. And that's how I was able to make these really neat effects. On the left hand side, I'm showing ground speed. That's not airspeed. GPS can only provide us ground speed, so don't get that confused. On the top right, we've got the rate of climb indicator as measured in feet per minute. On the bottom right hand side, that's the altimeter. Please note we're about 800 feet above sea level, so in this example we're about 100 feet off the ground at this point. Okay, let's fire this puppy up and let's go for a ride. As we fly in this demonstration, I want to go through the thought processes that I use when I'm flying. Now in this takeoff we're going to have a crosswind and that's good practice. We've got a crosswind from the left to right, so I'm holding left aileron into the wind keeping it straight with the rudder and when I rotate I'm going to simply do a crab to the left to counter the drift to the right and just hold that heading just like that so we make a straight line right down the down that runway. Now I'm flying with this with a 447 Rotec engine. Plenty of power for this machine. Just a delight to fly. A great rate of climb. As we climb out, I'm going to depart the airport over the top center of it. That's the safest place to be. Okay, we're leaving the pattern and headed out and we're going to do some stalls and some gentle wing overs too. It's really easy to do and I'll just go through my thought process as we try them. So we're headed out to some greener pastures out here and we'll try some stalls, some wing overs and You'll kind of get the idea of how it looks from the pilot's point of view. Okay, first thing I've done is I've cleared the area. We're cruising at about 55. I'm going to bring the nose up. You don't have to bring it up really high and it makes it very gentle. There it is. Right? See that break? Nose drops. Flying again. And here again, we're going to do another stall. I've got about a quarter throttle. Just bring the nose up, hold it, hold it, get the buffeting, drop the nose, pick up speed, flying again. Here we go, we'll try another one, get an idea of the angle, angle of attack. There it is, drops down, pick up speed, here we go again. Now on this next maneuver, instead of just stalling, I'm going to hold full right rudder and turn 180 degrees back, going in the opposite direction. See, I'm lining up with those roads. That's my mark. There we go. Okay, and again, instead of stalling, before it stalls, I'm going to be holding left rudder, and I'm actually aileron. And the reason I'm holding right aileron is that wing on the right side is flying faster, and it's going to tend to make it roll to the left. There's another stall. Quarter throttle, just as easy as it can be. Okay, let's do it again. Here we go. We're going to, well, it looks like I'm rolling to the right. We're going to bring the nose up as soon as I line up. I'm using north and south. See that road down there? That's my line. Of, that's the line I'm using. Here we go. Pull the nose up. Before it stalls, I'm going to kick in full left rudder, and I'm holding some right aileron to correct for the roll because that outer wing is flying slightly faster than the inboard wing. And there you have it. Here we go, bring it up, full right rudder, come around, change direction, there's the road to line up on, and that's how you do it. Oh, there's another stall, very gentle, this thing does not have a tendency to tip over on a wing or anything, it is really easy to fly, and it has flaps too. Now we, we cruise at about 55 to 60 with the 447. And that's just that just seems like the perfect combination for this airplane. 
pull the nose up here we go turn into the right with rudder change the direction 180 degrees there's the road I'm lining up with see the angle pull the nose up hold left rudder I'm holding right aileron can't quite see it from this view but I mean I definitely am doing that okay next here we'll be going into a landing the objective is if you can to be high enough that when the engine were to fail you still make the runway sometimes traffic will not allow you to maybe keep a tight pattern but there's no sense in dragging it down low on the ground just to land on those numbers and I don't do it that way okay as you'll notice You'll see that nose is not pointed right down that runway, is it? It's to the left to counter that drift. Now I'm going to go into a side slip and land. And just right away after that, it's just go back up, go around again, try it again. Just a lot of fun. Okay, let's try it again. Again, I'm using a crab angle to counter the drift. I'm not in a forward slip or even a side slip at this point. There is a difference in the two. You might want to look those up. Anyway, I'm just using a simple crab initially. I'm going to keep my speed up for safety reasons. I'm plenty high. You notice there, I'm still about 200 feet, and I'm just now over the runway. It gives me plenty of room for margin of error. I will start picking up some turbulence off of the building. That extra speed helps you control it. There it is. Left aileron down now. Right rudder. And we're on the ground. That's how you do it. Okay, we're going to try one more. So look up the difference between a side slip, a forward slip. Right now I'm just using a crab. That's not a slip. I'm, all I'm doing is adjusting for the crosswind for the drift. Now as I come in, I'm still using the crab angle approach. Very quickly here, I'm going to do a side slip, which simply means I'm going to keep the fuselage parallel to the runway when I get close to the ground. And I'm going to hold the left aileron down to counter the drift. I'm bleeding off the speed. I'm going to touch on the left wheel first. There it goes. The right wheel and then the nose drop. If you bought one of these new, I guarantee it'd be 20 grand, 15, 20, or maybe maybe even more than that. You can find them used between, I'd say between five and ten thousand, probably seven or eight if it's in really good condition, like this one. If you're looking for an ultralight, one of the best places to look is called Barnstormers.com. Barnstormers.com to look for ultralights. The hard part will be finding one that's close to your area. That's the hard part. My motto has always been, if it don't fly, you don't buy. If you don't have experience on knowing what's right and wrong in an ultralight, make sure you get one that can be flown and demoed right in front of you. Now we're talking. Hope you enjoyed this video. And take a look at my other videos about ultralight aircraft. You guys have a great day. And we'll see you in the air next time. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.